Okay, here we are at the National Museum of Natural History. Holistic travel guy here. And just like every other museum in Washington, D.C., there are dozens of... And this is the um, Ocean Life exhibit right in the center of the second floor. And all these exhibits are depicting ocean life and creatures that exist in the oceans and around the oceans, including the birds, the sea turtles, the sharks, the coral, the dolphins, and of course the giant blue whale. One of the largest whales in the ocean. I think the humpback might be the largest. The blue whale is probably the second biggest. We're even seeing some ancient sea creatures here with the bones of this um, incredibly long sea serpent right above us. And down here are some more ancient fossils of sea creatures. And there's a depiction of what they look like uh, 40 to 35 million years ago. And also 34 million years ago. Look at that. Here's some squid. Some, oh, how giant is the giant squid? That's an interesting question. How giant is the giant squid? And there he is, right there. Preserved in his cave. So his tentacles go way down there to the right. And here's his body right there on the left. So let's go upstairs to the next exhibit. Next floor up is the gem and jewelry, no, gem and mineral exhibit. Somewhere on this floor. Geology. That's what we're looking for. That way. And here we go. We looked at the map. And now we're going down. Looking for the minerals. Okay, finally we found the exhibit we're looking for, the Geology, Gems, and Mineral Exhibit here at the American Museum of Natural History. So we're going to go ahead and go in here. Hello. And we just went in the main door. Now we're going to see some cool stuff in here. Pieces of meteorite that landed in Mexico. On February 8th, 1969, a brilliant fireball exploded over northern Mexico. Momentarily turning night into day, and that's what it looks like when a meteor comes through the atmosphere and hits the Earth. Here's some more cool rocks and stuff. Here's a meteorite from Antarctica. Several pieces of meteorite from Antarctica. And there's where they landed. A giant sheet of ice on the South Pole. Here's a bunch of pieces of iron found in its raw state in the earth, pieces of iron cross sections. Here are some more pieces of iron, different color, found in Tennessee, Chile, Nigeria, South Dakota. All that is raw, natural occurring iron. Here are some meteorites from Mars. Not sure how that happens. Uh, volcanoes on other worlds, I guess, spewed these pieces of rock into the atmosphere, maybe? And then somehow they became 
meteorites um, found in Antarctica, Mauritania, Ukraine, Colorado, France, Egypt, Australia, New Mexico, South Carolina, Texas, Kentucky. So these pieces were found all over the world and they're uh, what's left of a much bigger piece of rock that burned up in the atmosphere before it hit the earth. It's amazing the pieces of meteorite that they found here. Makes you wonder how many more are out there that have not been found. Pieces of meteor. These are from Canada, Italy, Kansas, Antarctica, Azerbaijan, um, Indonesia, Romania, Illinois, Kansas, Texas. More and more pieces of meteorite. Just endless rows and rows of meteors. Oh, we can actually touch a piece of Mars right here. Touch a piece of Mars taken by the Viking spacecraft in 1976. This photo of the Martian surface shows the rocky rumble. So we could actually reach in there and touch that. Probably a lot of germs in there, so we want to get a sandy wipe next. <laughs> a lot of pieces of rock from Canyon Diablo. More, more meteorites all over the place. Meteorites, meteorites. Do meteorites ever fall on people? Good question. It's rare for humans to ever see a meteorite land, much less get hit by one. This is the one that went through Russia in 2013 and lit up the sky and actually caused a lot of windows to break. Thousands of homes were, were damaged by that meteorite. The shock wave, the sound wave, uh, created an explosion in the atmosphere that blew a lot of people's windows into um, little shards of glass. Okay, we'll see you in the next exhibit. Okay, this is a giant gypsum crystal. It grew from water solution. It filled a limestone cave located underground in Mexico state of Chihuahua, which we've been to. We don't have any videos from Chihuahua, but we have been there. So that's incredible giant gypsum crystal. And then this room is filled with a whole bunch more of these incredible crystals, gemstones, and minerals. Um, Malachite is the green one. Calcite is the pink one. Calcite is also that white one. Gypsum is this piece that looks like coral. Here's another giant gypsum piece, this white one. More gypsum. And then way back here, over in this corner, is a case filled with gold. This whole case over here is filled with pieces of gold. There's a whole bunch of pieces of copper. Here's some beautiful pieces of albate with albite and quartz. Here is more albate with quartz and albate. Beautiful pieces of albate and mineral crystal that we've never heard of. Pegmatite pocket. And when you press in the ignitor and turn it, it squeezes that piece of tourmaline and makes it Topaz, more topaz, 
more topaz, giant, huge rock of topaz. Elbate, Lipiodolite, pinkish purple mineral quartz. I can't even pronounce a lot of these. Flora petite, hairdurite, rosherite, graphentonite, Jeremiah J. Jevite. Very difficult to pronounce a lot of these names. There's some barrel, whole case full of barrel, different colors. There's some pretty light blue barrel. This giant rock here is a piece of barrel. Probably weighs about uh, 2,000 pounds. Please touch. Oh, we are allowed to touch it. Even the sign says please touch. So we'll get some good luck from touching that. Good vibes. Muscovite. We have heard of that one. Smoky quartz from Brazil. Microcline. Here's some more barrel. More calcite. More elbaite. Oh, here's some cool uh, gemstones. Fluoropatite. Diopside. Can't even pronounce a lot of these. Spiralite. Calcite. Diamonds. Honey, look at the diamonds. A point at either end, double terminated crystal quartz. Look at that. Those are not very common. A point at both ends. Most quartz crystals grow attached to rock walls and have only one pointed end. Herkimer quartz crystals, as we know from the Herkimer mine in upstate New York, which is very near the Omega Institute. Quartz Herkimer Diamond, Middleville, New York. So these are called Herkimer diamonds, but they're actually quartz crystals because they look a lot like diamonds. And speaking of diamonds, here's a whole case full of them, all the way from 1.7 carats to 12 carats to 10 carats to 82 carats, and the biggest ones are, let's see, it looks like this diamond from Africa is 740 carats, unpolished and uncarved. 740 carat diamond, so that must be worth a few million dollars. Here's a whole bunch of opals, beautiful gemstones here. Some more rose quartz, pink quartz, red quartz, green quartz. And then across on the other side of this exhibit are some beautiful geodes, geodes, quartz geode. Um, Amethyst geode, gigantic helium amethyst quartz crystal. Some more beautiful amethyst. Okay, that's it for this exhibit.